This is Chris. No, wait, that's not average enough. James. Okay, this is James. He just graduated with a bachelor's degree and $30,000 in student loan debt, which is a rounded average amount of what most graduates in the U.S. end up with, on which he pays a 5% interest rate, which is, again, pretty average. And this is Mary. Mary also took out the exact same loan. James's payment plan allowed him to be debt-free in 10 years, while Mary's repayment plan meant that she ended up owing more money after paying towards the loan for a decade. The Supreme Court is about to decide the fate of President Biden's plan to forgive up to $20,000 in student debt, but... That is by no means the only big thing that the Biden administration has done on student debt. One of his other moves that was actually announced the same day as mass debt cancellation got much less attention, but is arguably going to make a much bigger difference in the long run for student loan borrowers. The other big part of Biden's plan will change how Mary, James, and most other current and future borrowers will repay their student loans. Here's how. Let's start with James. On this loan, his monthly payment would be $318. And this is his payment schedule. It's like a mortgage or car loan, where the interest essentially gets paid off first. So his first month, James owes $125 in interest. So the remaining $193 of his monthly payment goes towards the loan's original amount, the principal, which then lowers his total balance. It's called amortization. Each month, less of his monthly payment goes towards interest and more towards the principal. Those monthly payments make his total amount paid go up and his balance owed go down. Until at the end of 10 years, he's paid off the loan, paying $38,000 in total. James's experience is what repayment looks like for more than 40% of all student loan borrowers. While he can afford those monthly payments on his $60,000 a year salary, that's too much for Mary, who makes $30,000 a year. So she did what nearly 40% of borrowers do, and went on to an income-based repayment plan, which lowered her monthly payment to around $68 a month. But with amortization, she still owes that $125 the first month, since it's the same loan as James. But Mary's monthly payment is less than that, meaning there's nothing to go towards the loan's principal, and her balance owed goes up. Her monthly payments only go towards the interest, which makes her total amount paid go up, but also her balance. At the end of 10 years, Mary has paid $8,000 towards her student loans, but she still owes more than $38,000. This situation is a common one. The exact number of Marys is unknown, but a Pew survey found that two in five borrowers owe more than they originally took out. I hear from people every single day whose current balances, even after they've been paying off their student loans for 5, 10, 15 years, are larger than the balance they started with. The income-driven repayment programs are set up to only last 20 or 25 years. So in theory, people like Mary will have paid $16,000 after two decades, and her then $53,000 balance would be forgiven. But a government report found that of all the borrowers at that stage, only 11% would be eligible for forgiveness. It shows how common it is that so few people are able to complete these programs. What's uncommon is successfully completing the income driven repayment program as it was designed. That's what's uncommon. If they miss one payment, they become unenrolled in the program. They could have not submitted their income recertification information, which is necessary every single year. Or there could have been some data issue where a payment to a servicer did not get recorded properly, and as a result, you are no longer eligible to be part of this program. If that happened to Mary, she would be on the hook for her entire balance with all that built-up interest. Re-enrolling in the program is her only path to earn forgiveness. This is something President Biden's student loan plan attempts to fix. Under the new system, any extra interest not covered by Mary's monthly payment would be forgiven, so her balance wouldn't increase. The new plan also changes the rules around who qualifies and lowers their monthly payments. Mary, with her $30,000 a year salary, would likely have no monthly payment. Even James would be eligible for a smaller monthly payment. And dramatically, if someone, uh, let's say Robert, 
has $12,000 or less in undergraduate loans, they would have their debt forgiven after 10 years of small or sometimes $0 payments. No one with an undergraduate loan today or in the future, whether for a community college or a four-year college, will have to pay more than 5% of their discretionary income to, re to repay their loan. So this is really shifting the boundaries between what counts as a loan and what counts as a grant. This proposal probably goes farther than President Biden intended to go, at least while he was campaigning for president. But that largely reflects the reality that nothing was getting done in Congress on this issue. And he felt for political or economic reasons or other reasons that he needed to move forward on an executive action basis or through using powers that were available to him under existing law. Powers not everyone agrees he should be able to use for this. Because President Biden couldn't get his radical agenda through Congress, he is dismantling the federal student loan program and pushing Democrats free college plan by executive fiat. These changes go into effect in July, regardless of how the Supreme Court rules on debt forgiveness. This plan is also going to be expensive. One report found that while forgiveness would cost the U.S. nearly $500 billion over the next 10 years, the changes to income-driven repayment would cost $141 billion, or more, as more borrowers take advantage of the program. While forgiveness is criticized as solving a problem for the past without creating a future solution, this plan looks to change the way student loans are handled going forward. So Mary doesn't end up owing $60,000 for her $30,000 degree. 